uh, you can, it, now I'm starting to feel it's softball season. I didn't really feel it until this past Sunday, so that, that feels good. And, and I see a couple of new faces, so I want to welcome you guys to uh, softball and baseball. I say this every year, but I, for one, am so thankful that you're here because the growth of our sport has been tremendous over the past five to ten years, and, and we couldn't have that if it weren't for all of the media. And as, as a woman um, working in female sports, it, it's just remarkable to see what we've done. And, and then when I couple that, and as a part of the Big Blue Nation, the fact that you guys cover us, you're really helping to bring more people into the fold. And so we have a great following within the Big Blue Nation's faithful, and, and it's really just helped this uh, softball uh, team continue to grow. Um, so we do, we get started off on Friday. We're going to be in Clearwater. It's it's going to be a great tournament for us. As, as you know, the last two years, we've had the number one strength of schedule. Uh, it, it's definitely a philosophy of ours. I don't know that you ever want to win number one strength of schedule, but, um, you know, we always play a tough one, and um, this year is no different. We're going to open up this weekend. You know, game one, Liberty has picked to uh, win their league, and, and they're their head coach is a former Olympian, one of the best softball players of all time. She brings a lot of passion and energy to the sport. So I anticipate this is going to be a tough game for us because I know her teams will do the same thing. And then um, in addition, we're playing other five, or five teams, um, of which Minnesota was in the Women's College World Series last year. And, and then um, in addition, we will play the U.S. national team. And, and for people who love the sport of softball, the United States is absolutely by far the best in the world at the sport of softball. And it's every kid's dream to one day be on a national team and, and also to play um, against the national team. So that's, that's going to be a really fun event for us and, and one that, you know, uh, we couldn't script it any better. So, that, so we're going to open up with that. Um, you know, Chris alluded to before, this is my 13th year, so we're hoping that's lucky number 13. Um, and I've had the same coaching staff complete for 10 seasons, if you include Molly Johnson. And that, with that said, Coach Himes has been with me the entire 13. And then this year, we're bringing back Brittany Cervantes, who's taken on a full-time position as our director of operations. But she's also a part of the Mexican national team, so she will be part of the Olympics this year. So we're really proud to uh, bring her back into the fold. I think the biggest question that I keep getting asked is, you know, how are you going to replace last year's senior class? And, and it's something that, you know, obviously we think a lot about. But I've never, when, with our program, I've never thought about how do we replace players. I always think about who's going to be the successor, who's going to be the next one. And this is this is no different for us. You know, it's it's going to be hard to succeed when you had three SEC all performers leaving. But I feel really good about this program. I mean, we've been to three straight NCAA appearances, Women's College World Series. We've been to seven Supers, four straight regional appearances, of which the last three that we've hosted, we've been undefeated. In fact, five of the eight games, we've been, um, we've run ruled those teams. And I think that's in large part to, um, it's so tough to play in front of the Big Blue Nation. So the question I don't have is, you know, how are we going to replace them? My question is, who is going to be the next successor that's going to take us to become a top eight national seed? Because that's one of our goals this year, is we, we've got to make sure that we're doing what we can to get a top eight national seed. We've been a national seed a number of years, but the thing that's going to help us be a mainstay in the World Series is to become a top national, a top eight national seed every single year. Um, you know, when I think about who's going to be the successor, you, I was so impressed with our sophomore class coming back this fall. I, I didn't know what to expect out of them. A lot of them did not get a, a significant amount of playing time last year. And so you never know when someone goes away for break and they come back how that's going to be. And I, and I was just floored by what I saw. They came back. First thing we always do is max testing in the weight room. And I was so impressed specifically with Renee Abernathy, J.C. Babs, Tatum Spangler, and Mangan Shorman. They went back this summer, took what a little experience they had, and they came back, and, and they really set the tone for what was an incredible fall for us. And then I think about our infield, and obviously we're returning um, Alex Martins and we're returning Mallory Payton, who were everyday starters for us, and, and that's a great, strong right side of the infield. So I, I feel good about where they are. Um, Lauren Johnson is somebody who's been a mainstay in our lineup for us. She will move from the outfield into the shortstop position, which is something I know that she's been very excited to do. She came to me in our, our end of the year meeting last year. She's like, so where do you want me to practice, you know, next year or this summer? And I was like, well, you know, take some fly balls. She goes, she goes, what about shortstop? 
And I was like, all right, well, make sure you take some ground balls at shortstop. Do what you need to do. Um, she's a shortstop by trade. Um, one of the best players who's ever played high school ball in Kentucky. And um, she not only went out, did an incredible job, but she came back in the best shape of her life. So I know she's excited about that. Emmy Blaine, also from the state of Kentucky, you could see her at shortstop, has some of the best hands that we've ever had out of anybody. So I feel, feel good about where they're at. From an outfield perspective, we return um, we return Bailey Vick. She'll probably be a mainstay out in left field. She is one of the best defensive players in all of the SEC. She is so exciting. She she can dive and get balls in front of her. She can get balls at the wall. She's She's got unbelievable range out in the outfield. And she's continued to work very hard um, at the offensive side of the game. You know, her freshman year, she was unbelievable offensively. Last year, um, with the rule changes, with the things that happened in the box, that was a little tough for all slappers in the country. But I know she's she's done an amazing job with that, really has sewn herself. So I'm looking forward to what she can do. Um, Kayla Kowalik, who was in center field a lot last year, um, you're going to see her behind the dish quite a bit. She'll she'll make the move. That's her natural position is to be a catcher. But our team last year was stronger with um, Jenny Shaper behind the dish and then Kayla out in center field. So you'll see her make the move into catching. And then we also brought in two outstanding catchers in Cassie Lindmark and Gabby Dieters, who are also great. So we have unbelievable depth in the catching position. And everyone who's followed Kentucky softball knows that is probably the hardest position to play in all the country is the catcher at the University of Kentucky. So I demand a lot of them, and, and um, I believe these, these three will respond. Um, we have seven newcomers in total. Um, we, uh, you know, and, and I didn't know what to expect out of them either. But then this fall, I thought, honestly, we were going to be pretty terrible. And uh, we went out, we played five power five teams. We went out, we won all the games. And I was shocked and kind of disappointed because I couldn't really yell at the team because I thought for sure I was going to be able to, you got to do this better and you got to do this better. And they were so dynamic out on the field. I, it was it was almost surreal. I, I didn't understand what I was looking at. And a lot of that had to do with the um, with Riley Smith, who came in. She is just when when the lights go on and there's just something different about her you don't see that in many athletes she just she really enjoys playing on game day she has the ability to stay in the moment and, and to just block out all distractions she's incredibly fast she's very powerful um, very exciting freshman to watch um, in addition in the freshman class i alluded to already our um, two catchers and emmy blaine but you also have miranda stoddard sloan um sloan gay and, and um uh, i already said emmy blaine so we have a great great um, staff, our freshman crew that's going to come in. And then finally, when you talk about the pitchers, we're returning five pitchers. Obviously, Grace Ballman and Autumn Humes had the majority of the pitching time. But Megan Shoreman was arguably our best pitcher this fall. And then you look at the depth that we bring with Larissa Spellman, Tatum Spangler being our only left-handed pitcher in the lineup, and then um, the two freshmen, Miranda Stoddard and, and Sloan Gann. So we're very deep in the pitching circle, which is where I believe we need to make the largest jump this season. So with that said, that's, that's pretty much how we're shaking up right now. How long do you think it's going to take for the chemistry behind the plate? If memory serves, you've had like two catchers the last seven years. Yeah, it's it's crazy because it was like national. You know how there's a national day for everything? And there was National Catcher's Day a couple of days ago. And I thought about it. And since being at Kentucky, the three catchers, the main catchers that we had had, um, all three had become all-conference at Kentucky. So that's that's kind of interesting. And we have three now. So, um you know, it's it's more about the comfort from the pitcher standpoint. I think everybody's very comfortable with Kayla. Uh, she has got a big, big, big personality. So she's somebody who loves the spotlight, and she's stubborn enough to be an outstanding catcher. You got you got to have that grit to you. Um, so I think there's a comfort level, and I, I think that that will happen very quickly because most of our pitchers are very unassuming people, and they know what they want to do, and, and they're they're good at communicating. So I, th I think that that will – I think we're going to probably need a weekend for the jitters to get out because we have so many people in positions that they're not comfortable playing. But once they get used to the crowd and once they get used to the cameras and stuff, I think we're going to be fine. So just to follow up on your catcher, you said that you put more on them than anybody maybe in the country. But you call the pitches. So what is it about playing catcher at Kentucky that isn't already inherent within the position? 
Well, first we look for it. So, you know, we talk a lot about leadership on our team, but to me, the ultimate leadership position on baseball and softball is behind the dish. I have never seen a championship caliber team that did not have a championship caliber catcher in terms of the mentality of the game. I think I've only seen it one time in 20 years in both sports. And so you cannot have a team without that. So we go look for that and they're not allowed to have a bad day. They're not allowed to drop the ball. They're not allowed to not have a strike. And also there's other, the game within the game, they're doing a lot of things. They're communicating to me what the hitters doing, where they are in the box, you know, what the umpires calling, what their umpires saying to them. So a lot of the pitch calling part of the game actually is relayed from the information that they give us. So it's, it's a tough position to play. And I, and I have, um, no tolerance for people who aren't good at that spot. So I think that's probably what makes it. So anyone who's coming to be a catcher at Kentucky, you probably should know that. So anyway, with that said, that's why they become some of the best ever. So, so if you can make it through and you're a catcher at Kentucky, you're pretty good. Um, yes. So speaking of Kayla, she played center field last year for the mm -hmm. first time. Was one of the best hitters on the team. Now to move back to catcher, just how important is her versatility, uh, especially as being as young as she is? Oh, I, I, she is probably our hardest out right now, too. Her versatility is is amazing, and she is just an outstanding athlete. And and you can tell it when she's in the box. Her presence is unbelievable. Her her uh, her ability to slow the game down and just be able to perform in the big stage is something that she's very good with. Um, I think that at the end of the day, she's probably she's gonna. I think she's gonna prove to be one of the people that make the team tick, one of the people that make the team go. So it's a um, so just to watch her gives you confidence. I think she's definitely going to grow to be quickly a fan favorite. Rachel, you're going to have a fast team this year. Mm -hmm. A lot of team speed. How fun is that going to be designing the lineup? And do you have that batting order set? You, you know, that's a great question. We had a coach's clinic on Saturday, and – I had to make a, I made a mock lineup to kind of show them what you could do with the lineup. And I was like, oh. And then even Coach Himes in the back was like, okay, here you go, big girl. Like, are you going to make the lineup? Who are you going to put in there? And she was curious. You know, obviously, we use, I use both of my coaches. Uh, we talk about who's going to be there. But at the end of the day, the head coach has to, has to have the say. And, you know, the top of the order seems to be, the question is, who's going to protect Alex Martins? That's that's going to become the big question because everyone knows that Alex is the best hitter coming back. She's our leading RBI hitter. She's she's somebody who's good under pressure. She's actually, you know, every team has a compass. Every team has a person who's their true north, and Alex is ours. So, like, who's going to protect her? That's that's where the question comes in. So, you know, you could see Lauren Johnson right now is is has an unbelievable eye. And she's done a great job making solid contact. Her deal right now is she's working on when she makes contact, she, can she do di damage with that? So she's looking like to be somebody in the top of the order. Kowalik obviously is somebody who I would prefer at the top of the order, but she very easily could move to a spot behind and protect Alex because you have to have somebody unbelievable at that spot. Because if they're going to walk her, then they're going to have to. We're going to have to have somebody that can can make them pay, you know? And, and then you got Mallory Payton, who's done an unbelievable job, and then Riley Smith. So those are the ones who like constantly statistically are, are day in and day out, get it done. And then the cool thing about this team is the bottom of our order is gonna be able to turn things over very, very quickly. So then you look at, you know, Renee Abernathy's done a great job and incredibly fast, that's a name you could get used to. JC Babs has done an unbelievable job with her pitch selection. And so she's somebody at the bottom of the order that's just that person you hate to pitch to because she just doesn't swing outside of the zone. And, and then our freshman, Dieters has Abby Cheek power. So, and that's, that's quite something. She miss hits balls over the right center fence. And, and you don't see that very often. So when she, when she gets comfortable with pitch selection and things like that, she's going to be one of the best hitters who've, who've ever played here. So right now it was the five I mentioned earlier, but to be honest with you, I seriously doubt the team that starts day one is going to be it for the rest of the season. I think that everybody's going to, everybody has value on this team and it's a matter of creating, creating that value when, when their opportunity arises, they have to take advantage of it. Experience in the circle. Just talk about them and what do you expect from them this season? 
You know, Grace has hit a new level this year. One of the, if you look at the rules, the pitching changes have been helpful with that in that she doesn't have to keep both feet on the rubber anymore. And when you're six two and that tall, that's that's absurd. So I'm glad that that rule changed. Um, and I think that has helped her, but also because she got, I know she was disappointed that she had get, been hurt at the end of last season and, and she came back this fall and, you know, we have an unbelievable training staff and they did a great job getting her back and now she's full go and her pitches are just breaking all over the place and and she's also a very mature person she's one of the smartest people i've ever met so i know that that's really helped her now that she's a junior um autumn humes is you, you know you have your leaders on the field and you have your leaders off the field she's been a great leader for us off the field um she does a great job of keeping the team together we have great team culture and and teams say that all the time but that's been probably one of our program's strengths and autumn has done a great job with that tradition. Um, so, and she knows what she wants to do. Autumn has, you know, she's been to national championships. She's been, she's had a lot of awards. She knows what she wants to accomplish. So I think she's important because someone like Megan, who is incredibly talented, doesn't have that experience at the college level yet. And so you're gonna have to lean heavily on Autumn and Grace to get that done. And then of course the freshmen also, who are, who are unbelievable talent. Stoddard throws harder. Her and Megan throw the hardest for us. And, and once Stoddard kind of it becomes more precise, she's going to be somebody to reckon with as well. So Autumn's experience will help them out quite a bit. We have time for a few more. Rachel, you always pride yourself on recruiting smart players. Mm -hmm. I assume it's going to be the same this year. And how does smart player translate to success out on the field also? You know, I do. Um, I pride myself in that a lot. And, and this class is no exception. Uh, you'll take Emmy Blaine, for example. She, I didn't even know she was valedictorian of her high school. Um, I saw it on Twitter, by the way. And she's like, well, you know, I am pretty smart, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, her, her softball IQ is just absolutely off the charts. And along with that comes the understanding. So the people who do the best in our program are the ones that have an unbelievable growth mindset. And if you give them the information, they know how to take it, work backwards, and they're very self-motivated. And a lot of times, grades aren't always an indication of intelligence. A lot of times, they're just an indication of your work ethic and your ability to listen to other people, whether it was your high school basketball coach or your, you know, your history teacher or whatever the case is. So to me, that's really important that you can listen to what other people tell you and you respect them enough that you can take the information and then self-motivate to get going. And, and that, that has continued to happen within the program. I'll tell you, the thing that our team right now has to figure out, and, and I see it in Kentucky basketball as well, the scoreboard doesn't care if you're a nice person. And that's the thing, that it doesn't care. You know, so you have to get really good at stuff. So if you can take the information and become good at something, then that's what's gonna matter. Now, having great team culture and being a great team player makes it an enjoyable experience and it makes it a place where people wanna come to every day. And because they enjoy what they're doing, then they will get better. But at the end of the day, you still have to be really good. You have to have talent, numbers do matter. And so the thing that I've, you know, this team does everything the right way, well, most of the time, but the team does just about everything the right way. So I have to explain to them that that's not gonna always result in wins, you actually have to win the game. So let's take everything you do well, make it a great experience, but you have to go after these certain things. And I think that's gonna be the challenge of this team right away because they're gonna be like, wait, you don't mean just because I'm a good kid and I'm nice that I'm gonna win games? Well, no, that doesn't, doesn't mean that. And so once they figure that out, I think this might be the team that could help us get that top eight national seed. Last question over here in the you beginning kind of rattled off the resume of, the, of your program and it's obviously pretty impressive with postseason appearances and people have shown up here for the postseason tournaments and the crowds have been fabulous and you built to that and now it's expected of your program and of your players what is it like i know what it's like for you what is it like for them to carry that oh you're gonna have to ask them i don't know um you know last year this was awesome um Alex Martin said that I'll never, she says things she doesn't know when I'm listening, but I always kind of listen to her. Don't tell her I said that. But um, anyway, I'm kidding. She's, I know she's in the room. Um, so they used to do this thing that was the hit and kittens and it was pretty cool. It caught on nationally and the team did that. And it was a good team, you know, but over the past couple of years, our offense has exploded. We, we were, there was a couple of years ago, I think our 
our offense was 172 in the nation in scoring. We were horrible. And somehow, well, I don't, we had great defense and great pitching, so we were able to claw our way into Super Regionals. Um, and then the following year, we were like 36 in the nation or something in scoring. And then last year, I think we were the number one team in the SEC in scoring. I might be wrong there, but we were at the top. And I remember in the middle of that, Alex, all of a sudden we're doing this cat daddy thing. And you have to understand, I have no idea what they're doing. So I see it, it when I'm scouting at night, late at night, I see, I see all the antics that you guys see real time in the game. I don't even know what's happening. The dugout is a blur to me. I don't hear them. I don't listen to them. I don't know what's going on. And so I'll see it. And, but I had overheard her say, I'm like, what's this cat daddy thing? She goes, oh, you know, the hitting kittens, that was awesome. And we love our team and we love our tradition. But that's that's when we were more just generating offense. Now we're a much better offensive team. So we're going to be the cat daddies. And I was like, OK, I got it. And so I think there's a lot of pride. And we have so many unbelievable alum. And they are the ones who have gotten us to where we are now. And I was very fortunate. I took over a team that had really high character, and really I just had to organize them. And we have unbelievable resources, and I have an awesome staff. The continuity in our staff, I mean, I've had the same academic advisor, strength coach, nutritionist, um, leadership training, I mean, grounds crew. I've had the same people working with softball almost the entire time I'm here, and that, that really matters. That has been in success. And then when you take the support of, you know, our, we have the best AD in the country and the big blue nation, everything that they pour in day in and day out, you get a really successful program. So I think all of that, we take a lot of pride in that. And I think they love being a part of that, but the pressure day to day to outdo. So your deal is to leave your mark and outdo the classes that came before you. That's never an easy thing to do. With that said, I think they embrace the challenge, they love the challenge, and they love being on the big stage. So I think it's like, I don't think there's any negatives to it. It's just, it's hard. It's just really hard, but it's fun. Oh. Thank you, Coach Lofton. I'll leave it up to Christmas. All right, thank you. All right. Hope you guys watch. Hey. Thanks, Matt. Um, thank all of you for being here as always, and um, not only for everything you've done for our sport, but softball and all the other sports. So, and special thanks to you, Matt, for everything you do. Uh, this time last year, Kentucky Proud Park was like the main topic of conversation. So, I'm going to start with that again. I'm very thankful for the amazing ballpark, and love hearing all the comments from our fans and our alumni. That part's been good. Um, also, want to uh, mention that we're continuing to learn a new ballpark. It's uh, obviously totally different than the cliff. I wish I could sit here and tell you we've got it masters and we don't by any stretch of the imagination. But a couple things that are definitely different about the ballpark is that I've learned over the last year is that run prevention is absolutely crucial to when we were at the cliff. A lot of you understand and would know that run production was key. But in this ballpark, run prevention is obviously something really big. And uh, with that said, we have 36 home games this year, the most ever. So we're excited about that. Um, I don't know how excited some of you are for the February 19th game, but uh, we are excited about that. You've heard me talk. This is our fourth year together. You've heard me continue to talk about the student, the person, and the player. A um, couple things about this team so far as students. Uh, our team GPA this past semester was a 3.35 team. So proud of them for that. That's tied for the second highest in 18 years. So proud of our guys for that. And then as people, we make them give back and give back to the community. And this team has done 550 hours from August 15th to December 15th. They've donated 550 hours of community service. And if you guys know me, that's important. It's not OK just to wear the UK jersey. You have to give back. And uh, they've done that. Proud of them. And then over the past three years, we've had 24 draft picks now. That's exciting. But this year's team, it's now for them and our opportunity for to prove to them how good they are as players. So looking for forward to that. Uh, a couple new staff additions. Um, Dan Roselle 
is now our pitching coach, and Will Coggins, our recruiting coordinator. Um, really enjoyed having those guys. Dan Rosell, his track record and resume is as impressive as anyone's. Uh, long, tedious process this summer in that hiring process. A couple stats about him. His, sta- his staffs have, led, uh, have been in the top 50 in ERA. Seven of the last, what is it, nine years? Seven of the last nine years. Um, he's coached 11 guys that have made it to the big leagues, uh, including Chris Hill. So um, he, uh, he has challenged our pitchers to do three things, and he's challenged them to do a lot more than three things. But his three points of emphasis have been, number one, you got to throw strikes. Number two, you have to control the running game. And the third one is work extremely fast. So those are three areas that he's challenged them on. Uh, Will Coggin, recruiting coordinator, former player of mine, uh, and actually coached with him at Mississippi State. Um, really neat because, you know, we talk about family all the time. And Coach Williams, those of you who know him, he coached me as a player. And I now have coached Coach Coggin. So it's kind of a neat little deal we have going on. But Coach Coggin is a proven winner. He is awesome teaching the swing. He's coached two different guys in the SEC that have won SEC batting titles. So I'm um, thankful for him and his experience there. But then also as a player, this guy's been at a College World Series as a player. He's an SEC champion coach. He too, as young as he is, he's coached 11 guys that have made it to the major leagues already. So um, proven winner and just tireless worker. He is just constantly working. So, um, And then one other staff, Troy Squires is back with us. Those of you know him. Former player here, ended up getting drafted, went on, played professional baseball. He has uh, finished professional baseball and finishing his master's degree. So Troy was our first ever senior class award winner. So uh, season tickets, this is my infomercial. I'm going to put on my uh, marketing cap and uh, do that for you, Greg. But uh, single season and uh, season tickets and single game tickets are on sale. $64 for general admission. I'm proud of myself. I had that memorized. Um, you can go to UKBaseballTicks.com for that information. Uh, so thankful for all of our fans. We have set and broken the top 10 record crowds in the history of the program the last three years. So thankful for Brian Minrovic and his team. And I was told that our tickets were mailed out last Thursday, so check your mailboxes. Um, marketing, Greg Herbert, thanks for everything you've done. Um, we welcome along. Brooke will be with him this year. A um, couple of SEC on Thursdays, it's going to be ladies' night. Ladies get in free, and it's going to be tailgating Thursdays. So we're encouraging some tailgating. Um, we want to increase that at Kentucky Proud Park, so have an opportunity to do that. Friday nights will now be our main giveaway night, where we'll give away, what do we got, aviator glasses, beach balls, cooking aprons, all those things. And now Saturday, the kids get to run the bases. So last year, if you remember, we had the kids running bases Friday night, and it was my understanding that we had a bunch of terrors on Saturday morning because of the night game. So we have made that adjustment, and um, we will now have the kids run the bases on uh, Saturday. And then, of course, Sunday will be our um, team autograph. So we'll do that. We continue to have youth teams run out in the field with us. You guys know how important that is to me. Um, they, youth teams get in free. We teach them how to stand for the national anthem the right way and respect our country and those protecting it. So we do that and they get an opportunity to take the field with the cat. So we'll continue to, to do that as long as birthday parties, we'll have lots of birthday parties. So, um, all right, as far as the team goes, much feeling, different feeling this year compared to last year. You know, I made the comment that I felt like we were starting over last year, just so many new faces and, uh, knew it would be hard. But sometimes when, until you go through it, you don't know how hard it would be. And uh, it was an extremely difficult season, as a lot of you know. But uh, we were close last year. But just for whatever reasons, we had seven games in our league where we lost by one or two runs, and we just could not close the door. But um, last season, for example, we had, uh, what do we have, two guys with 85 at-bats or more. That's all we had. And this year, we actually have eight guys with 90 at-bats or more. So offensively, we'll have uh, a ton more experience. We have now experience at catcher, first, second, short, and in the outfield, which we didn't have. And you know what? That's a, a big deal. And this league is not forgiving, as you guys know. And when you don't have experience, it's really hard. And um, it was frustrating. I have this example I want to use with Reeves. And my wife, Kristen's an amazing mom. And Reeves is five years old now. And early in the year, he had uh, tie shoes. He calls them tie shoes. The Velcro's gone. So he now has tie shoes, and uh, he wanted to wear them to school. And Kristen said, you can only wear these to school if you know how to tie them yourself because the teacher can't tie them. you got to be able to do this yourself. So I remember one morning he felt like he had it, and he w- put his shoes on, and he's tying them, and they're, it's not going good. And as a father, it was really hard to watch. 
him just fail, and I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get in there, and I couldn't tie his shoes for him. And I just watched him, and I watched the frustration set in, and you know what? It was time to go, and he could not wear his shoes to school that day. In a lot of ways, that's how I felt about our team last year as a coach. Man, my heart hurt. We tried and we tried and we moved pieces and we kept giving guys opportunities and it just didn't happen. And now that they have the experience, that experience should speed up their learning curve and some things should happen for a lot of those guys. And I'm thankful and um, excited that they're here and I'm getting a chance to watch it and be alongside with them. So um, speed, we're going to have some team speed. This may be the fastest team I've ever coached. So stolen bases is going to be key. And uh, the speed, you know, you've heard the saying, speed doesn't go in slumps. So that should be good, and it should really help us on the defensive side as well. Um, pitching, as far as pitching goes, one mentality that I want to compliment Coach Rozelle on is he has basically challenged our pitchers to be the tip of the spear and that it starts with them on the mound, and um, he has just done a phenomenal job, and that's a direct reflection of him and the mentality that he has put into our pitching staff. So um, thankful for that. Let's talk about some of the guys. Zach Thompson's gone, unfortunately. Um, wish we had him back. Uh, he's been back training. It's been good to spend time with him and watch his growth. But uh, we have zero seniors on our pitching staff. We have six seniors on our team. They're all positional players. So the only senior I'm talking about athletically now, not academically. Um, we don't have any seniors. But Carson Coleman's the one guy that has the most experience. And he ended up getting drafted this past June, decided to come back. He's going to graduate in May. He will be a key piece out of our bullpen, as he's been his basically his entire career. Jimmy Ramsey's back. His body has changed dramatically. I want to compliment Coach D and our staff and our nutrition staff on helping him and his commitment to his body. It's better. He's more confident as a result. He does have a swing and miss slider, but his changeup. Coach Roselle's really helped him with his changeup. So um, Mason Hazelwood's back. Had a great summer in the Cape Cod League. He is a guy we're going to count on. He's been great this fall and this spring. Um, Daniel Harper led our team in appearances. He's kind of done a little bit of both since he's been here. He started. He's thrown out of our bullpen. Um, he's been dramatically better, and uh, his basketball velocity is increasing, and it's doing good. And then a couple sophomores, Dylan Marsh, Alex Deegan, Braxton Cotton Game, Hunter Rigsby, and Cole Daniels are all back. And they got a ton of experience last year, should pay dividends this year. And two freshmen that have really stood out on the pitching side, Cole Stupp and Zach Lee have been really, really impressive. Um, ben Jordan continues to stay with basketball. Figured I'd save the question. Um, he's going to stay with them until the season finishes, and he's going to continue to uh, take elbows from Nick Richards and Buddy Noses and, and uh, continue to help our program. Ben, it's been really neat. He's throwing bullpens now with us once a week, and just to see his body, how changed he is, and then to be around a Hall of Fame coach and coaching staff, it's made Ben better. And um, so we look forward to getting him back when uh, basketball finishes. I'll spend some time on some of these positional players. TJ Collette is back, and he's healthy. Had another surgery this fall, but his body looks great. He's in great shape. He has elite power, of all, as all of you know. He actually led the Cape Cod League this summer in home runs. So um, he is uh, just an unreal teammate and human being. And then Jaron Shelby, I'm going to talk about three seniors. Um, Jaron Shelby, Brandon Daniels, and Elliot Curtis. We need those guys to be like Luke Heyer and Luke Becker and Ryan Shin to where their senior years, they put together their best years. And uh, we're counting on those guys to do that. Austin Schultz is back. Um, Schultz suffered an injury towards the end of our last season, played very few games this summer. And Austin didn't get an opportunity to play this fall, but he's back. So he, in a lot of ways, is playing catch up. But uh, he's extremely talented and he'll be a big piece. We had three guys playing the Cape Cod League this summer and win the Cape Cod League championship, which is a big deal. You want your players to experience championships, um, not only where they play, but also in the summer. So Cam Hill did that. He's just uh, an amazing baseball player, spent more time in left this year. Left field, we have learned, is extremely difficult to play at Kentucky Proud Park. So look for Cam to play a lot of left field. And then Colton Kessler and Tanner Holen will be our two catchers that will uh, man behind the plate. Colton Kessler is one of the three guys that also won the Cape Cod League championship. And then two newcomers to watch, uh, Raja New, junior college transfer, who also won the Cape Cod League championship, and freshman John Rhodes. Have, have, those two guys have been very, very impressive. Um, last two things, well, I'll talk about our schedule. Um, extremely challenging. Again, we open up at TCU next Friday. They've been to Omaha a bunch of times, and I think it's going to feel a lot like at 17 when we opened up at North Carolina. I just wanted our team to be battle-tested right away. And uh, speaking of battle-tested, we'll be battle-tested again. 15 of our 
first 18 SEC games are against teams ranked in the top 12. 15 of our first 18 SEC games. And then we get the, the challenge of opening it up at Vandy, the national champion. So looking forward to that challenge come SEC play. Uh, I want to thank our alumni, all the ones that we've had back in the past year to see the ballpark. Um, it's been awesome. It's their program. Thank you for embracing it and being a part of it. That part's been good. And then, you know, even a lot of the pro guys coming back. Just as I walked over here, there's a bunch of guys down there throwing bullpens. So to have all those guys back has been really neat to spend time with them. So I'm looking forward to uh, an exciting and challenging season. And uh, questions? Thought I'd open up for questions. Uh, Coach Byerway, Josh. Uh, bring it back to Carson Coleman. Uh, got drafted and came back. Uh, how, how important a piece is he to be to the bullpen? Yeah, it's huge because he's been in a lot of tight games and big situations. And um, it's one of those things where those experiences are only going to make him better. But for him to be able to just go on to professional baseball, I think there's a part of Carson. Number one, he wanted to be able to graduate. So he'll do that this May. And uh, God willing, he'll be drafted again and go out to professional baseball, having only work on one career instead of two, right? Um, so, but his just, his maturity is just incredible. Um, he worked our camp. We had a prospect camp on Sunday and just to watch him interact with some of those campers and run it. It was just, I just have such a piece about him that how much he's grown because three years ago, I don't know if he'd been able to do that. And um, he'll be ready to, we'll equip him and launch him into professional baseball. But uh, as far as this year's team, it's going to be extremely valuable. This team's a lot faster, maybe the fastest you've ever yeah. heard. So will we see more, you know, hit and run, button run, steal, because of the because the stadium is uh, home run prevention? Yes. Look, you have to prevent runs, and anytime you can pre-pressure. Look, Brian, that turf is faster. We've had to change the way that we give our guys ground balls. We now have our fungal hitters up close, just hitting rockets at them because the ball gets on you. And um, so, yeah, that speed will be extremely important. The stolen bases are going to be important. Our ability to go first to third will be extremely important. So all those things, just to do whatever we can to get an extra base, um, because the, the uh, obviously, run prevention, as I mentioned, is going to be key. Yep. It looks like in the media guy, there's some high expectations for John Rhodes. What's the new guy coming in? What's he done to catch your eyes? So yeah, good question, Derek. Um, he's just so talented. He's might be one of the top two or three fastest guys on our team. He's probably in the top five in power. He might, I think, I'm going to go on and say he has the strongest arm in our infield. So when you break down his tools, the run, the hit, the field, the throw, the power, he really has it all. And um, to go along with that, he is a tireless worker. Derek, that guy just lives in our facility on our batting cage, on the turf, taking ground balls. He just, he is, he is wired right. And the, to go along with it, the guy made a 4.0 this past semester. He just he has every tool that you need, and uh, he's extremely talented. And I'm I'm really looking forward to coaching him. It says infield outfield for him. Where do you think he might settle? He'll start out in the infield um, because we have so many guys like Braden Daniel that could move around, and we want to be respectful to TJ and just keep him healthy. So TJ is going to end up playing first base and. Maybe when he doesn't play first base, maybe Braden Daniel could slide in there. John Rhodes could maybe go to the outfield. But right now, for John, most of his time will be spent in the infield. In terms of a potential lineup, do you feel like this is one of your more balanced teams in terms of left, right, switch hitters? Yeah, there's a chance we could have three switch hitters in the lineup at times. Um, but, you know, I, I've always talked about you got to be able to have guys that can actually fly in burners. I feel like we have those. you got to be able to have guys that can hit doubles at any time and then homers. And... Um, we do. We do, Darren. You've been out there and you've watched. There is a great balance of lefties and righties. Um, and now my challenge is going to be to find what's the right order and who's the right personnel. And um, because now we do have some guys with some experience and just trying to get the right order is going to be key for us. On the pitching staff of the returning guys from a year ago that got their feet wet, really struggled, who made the biggest jump, you think? It's Jimmy Ramsey. Um, mentally, physically, 
and under Coach Roselle's tutelage, his ability to just improve his changeup, Brian. So now he's not, you know, a, a two pitch mix to every guy, but he's a three pitch mix to both lefties and righties. And uh, but it started with him, with the commitment that he made to his body, and um, it's really carried over into all phases. Yeah. Yeah, good question, Derek. So um, there was a bunch of things. I continued to go to our house. I wanted someone that was committed to family. So I had the opportunity to fly to Coach Roselle's house. Um, he has three kids. He has two daughters and a son. So um, really his interview, besides the phone interviews, was done in his house with his entire family. And got a chance to sit in his living room and watch and see what kind of husband he was and what kind of dad he was and the way he interacted with his kids and all that. But um, number one, I, he brought the term tip of the spear. I wanted someone that could just teach our guys to be the most competitive people on the entire field because it starts with that guy on the mound. When the game is going on, the first person and really that all of us are looking at is that pitcher. And um, sure enough, I wanted people or so I wanted someone that can teach them and had that mentality of competitiveness. So, and then obviously his bil our ability to throw strikes. This ballpark demands you throw strikes in it. You cannot just sit out there and walk guys. And then obviously someone that would want to work quick. And uh, so he checked off a lot of those boxes. Yep. Nick, Rachel talked about the alums that have shored up her program. You've had a lot of guys come back and work out here, the guys that are playing pro ball now. How does that help your program? And what kind mm -hmm. of effect does yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's a mate like just yesterday. This is sometimes surreal for me. Colin Calgill was in yesterday and he's taking BP on our field and we're just hitting and just to think I coached him here however many years ago. But this fall, we've had so many guys back. Zach Rex has been back right now. I left Trevor Godstone, a bullpen. Zach Logue's down there. Logan Salo's in there. Um, even Lex and Tony and Walker Bueller's down there throwing. Um, Zach Brown's throwing. Um, Connor Hetty has been back. We've had so many guys and just to spend time with them. And then even for our players, just to see them down there and to see what it looks like is so important because every one of our players, that's where they want to be. They want to be in professional baseball. I want to be like Trevor God and be in the big leagues, right? They want to be, you know, where they're sitting there and they're watching Colin Cowgill and all these guys. So it's just a big deal. And the fact that they all come back and want to come back, that's a big deal. And uh, I think for our players just to be around them and see them and then for them to even know like, hey, this ballpark is built for them. Right, come on, just keep coming. This is their program. It's been neat. It's been really neat. Nick, I see you so energized sitting up there. With your initial success and then with the building of the ballpark, I saw a lot of people come to Kentucky baseball games that normally didn't have interest. What do you want to tell Big Blue Nation out there to be able to kind of keep that momentum going or recapture that momentum? Yeah, that, well, number one, that, you know, we're into the development of our student athletes. Like, that is so important. And that when they come out to watch us, like, hey, these are guys that have been held accountable and they continue to do things in the classroom. Just our deal. Just, you know, they, hey, look, they have a 3.35, right? But also, hey, look, they're good people. They're going to give back. And then as players, but ultimately, like, they want to win. And we want to win. So our fans, create a winning environment. I'll never forget that crowd standing on their feet and you were there, right, John? Like in that regional where we're about to go to Super Regional and that crowd is singing Sweet Caroline and it's like the other team is just rattled and frustrated and we need a double play, bam, we get a double play and Riley Mahan's high stepping and he's running off the field and it's like our fans help create that. But these guys are just, not only are they great human beings, like they want to win and we want to win and they – by them coming to the ballpark, John, they, they help us win. And we need them. And we need them. You mentioned Adu earlier. Yes. Have you seen from him? He is a professional hitter. Araj Anu, professional hitter. He's been drafted two times. Um, father played football at Florida. Mom was an Olympian sprinter. Um, just, like, just an amazing hitter. He can flat out hit. And... Um, and I don't want to jinx him, but we need him to keep getting hits when we <laughs> open up next Friday. But just a professional hitter. What are you guys seen at all? Some of the highs and lows under you. How important is his leadership going forward? On who's this? TJ. Oh, yeah. He's just – he is the voice. He's the guy that, you know, the players feel comfortable going to. He's the guy that just shows up in our office and hangs out and spends time with us just because um, – 
And you know he's been here four years. He's been here four years. Of our six seniors, him and Zeke Lewis are the two guys that have been here for four years. Um, and the other four guys were junior college transfers. So he just has a ton of experience, and he's, he's just comfortable in his own skin. That's the beauty of TJ. So um, guys, go to him for anything. They just feel comfortable. Coaches, players, everyone. He just makes everyone better. He has that unique ability to make people better. And the stuff he does at the children's hospital with the kids coming to our ballpark with the NIGU and the Kentucky's Children's Hospital, it's really amazing. He's, I hope I get an opportunity to coach another guy like TJ Collette because his heart and his talent and just, whew, he's special. There's no doubt. Yeah, so we'll, we'll ease him back in. Obviously, you know, their guys' health is always so important to me. Um, but um, he's th his bullpen's his last his last bullpen was really good, so we won't waste much time once basketball finishes. Let's hope it's a really long time from now. Um, but uh, we won't waste any time. We'll get him face some hitters at practice or whatever, and we're going to throw him right into the fire wherever that spot is. But he'll start out of the bullpen. He'll start out of the bullpen. Last year, you had to replace all those draft picks in offseason. But what have you seen this year that? Yeah, just the way the guys carry themselves. Um, you know, coaching is a lot like I'm learning a lot like parenting. And sometimes you got to, in parenting, I've realized that sometimes you just got to keep saying the same things over and over. Right? And just whatever's most important to you. Right? And we talk about family winning in all areas of their life and the development piece. And um, I just... Feel, I don't feel like we've had to repeat ourselves as much, you know, and I felt like a year ago with all those new people, it was just everything was brand new, and it was just we kept, and those guys competed so hard, so thankful for their competitive spirit, um, but we're not repeating ourselves, and we're able to move on to different levels now, and um, that comes with them even being comfortable in their own skin, you know, having done something for the for the second time. Um, guys like Jaron Shelby, just way more comfortable in his own skin, and um you know, it, it is, they're the ones that got to play the game, and it's our job as coaches to prepare them. And, man, when they get it, like Reeves tying that shoe, and he's ready to go off to, to, to school now with his tie shoes, it's much like our players. It's like, man, they've been through it now. And, um, man, as hard as it was to just sit there and, and want to help them, and we couldn't. They just needed to keep playing. That same experience and that confidence should bring them and help them this year. Looks like you're going to have to grapple for a little while to put together a weekend rotation and settle into one, like you did last year. And I know every program deals with this, but what has been the challenge in terms of recruiting, of building that pitching staff to where you can settle into a stronger rotation? Yeah, well, our first two years, I mean, we really pretty much used the same four starters, right? We had Jelly, we had Zach Lowe, who ended up being a top 10 rounder and going, and then we threw J. Lou. Well, year two, you got, we had Jelly sitting there again. We had J. Lou, and all we did was move ZT from the midweek to right there. So you threw – we had the same rotation. That was one of the strengths of those teams. Well, that was great at the time, but who was getting the, the starts while that was going on, you know? So last year, obviously, we used Dylan Marsh, right? We got a chance – Jimmy Hazelwood. So those guys will have opportunities to have some experience now, and then we need, obviously, that experience to benefit – so some of those guys will be right in the mix of who's going to start for us. Yeah. Thank you all. Go Cats.